Mackenzie, putting a little effort into it now, I see. Hmm. Right then. For inspection, port arms. Well, what about the rest of it? The rest of it? What do you mean, Sergeant? Open the breech block. Look, look. Make your finger like that and hook it around the nipple. Well, go on! What are you doing? The rifle, not you! Take and rotate the breech block out of the shoe. Go on. But my breech block's not in my shoe, Sergeant. Not your shoe, Mackenzie, not your shoe. The rifle. I know what you need. Extra drill. The conversion of the P-53 Enfield Rifle Musket to the Snyder Enfield, beginning from 1866, saw perhaps the largest evolutionary step in British and Empire military small arms since the adoption of a universal rifle in the mid-1850s. It was the service's first breech loader, firing a self-contained cartridge. The firepower developed by such a rifle was considerable and could more than double the rate of fire of its muzzle-loading cousin. But the Snyder was indeed simply a conversion of the rifle that came before it. And to that end, the positions, movements, and evolutions used to hold and carry the weapon were identical to those used with the earlier P-53. This simplified the conversion process, which focused on the platoon, or firing exercise, to which there was massive and comprehensive changes. But that is the subject of another video. Once issued with this new rifle, the troops simply carried on their daily duties as they had done before, comfortable with the weight, size, and feel of the new rifle. In this video, we'll cover the movements and evolutions used by Snyder armed troops to carry or hold their rifles. This was known as the manual exercise. The manual exercise governed how each man would handle his rifle depending on his daily duties or circumstance, in garrison or in the field. Before we begin, however, there should be a few caveats discussed. Firstly, the Snyder was only in British service from 1867 until the mid-1870s. Thus, there are very few photographs or artwork of troops carrying. Unlike the plethora of images of the Martini or the Lee Metford, the Snyder suffers from a somewhat unfortunate lack of exposure. To this end, it is very difficult to locate historical images that depict the rifle being used or carried in certain ways. Many of the images used here are depicting Canadian troops, who used the Snyder well into the 1890s, and therefore more apt to be photographed with them. A point mentioned before in similar videos, but bears mention again, is the nature of the exercise, the way in which it was performed. You see, in the Victorian era, the manual exercise, or drill as we would know it today, was not the flamboyant presentation that the modern eye has become accustomed to. There was absolutely no foot stamping, or lifting the knee to any extent. The movements were executed in a smart yet workmanlike manner without embellishment. Although elements of the exercise were ceremonial in nature, such as the present arms, these were very much the movements of the battlefield and duty. The reference used for this video is the Manual and Platoon Exercise from 1867. The issue of this volume coincided with the introduction of the Snyder into British and Empire service. Incidentally, the issue of the Snyder in Canada was remarkable in its timeliness and efficiency. Having dealt with an invasion by the Fenians in 1866, it was felt that these new weapons were needed in North America to counter any continued threat. The existing Enfield muzzleloaders being by that time quite obsolete. In Canada, the Fenians would again try to invade in 1870. This time, they were met with fire delivered by the breech-loading Snyder. The positions the soldier carried his Snyder long rifle in were identical to those used with the Enfield, although some of the movements between these positions became streamlined or augmented. The most basic position was that of order arms, or attention. This was a position of alertness and served as a springboard of sorts to other positions and movements. It also conveyed respect. 
The man stood with his feet 60 degrees apart. The butt of the rifle was held close to the outside of the right foot. The legs were straight, but not strained. The right hand held the rifle close to the body, with the thumb on top. The left hand, and indeed any hand that was disengaged during any movement, was held against the thigh. The arms were straight, and the body and head held in an upright, soldierly manner. There have been a couple of instances during the filming of this video where my hand placement has been less than regulation, shall we say. In some of the footage, I've held my hand so that the knuckles face the front. This isn't entirely correct. When under arms, the hand was to be placed flat against the thigh in all positions. The position of stand at ease was used to allow for rest. When acting as a sentry or in any duty not requiring immediate movement or acknowledgement, the man would be found in this position. There was a further variation known as stand easy, which was yet again even more relaxed. The position remained the same, but the man was permitted to make minor adjustments and stretch while not quitting their ground or talking. This position was the same whether the bayonet was fixed or unfixed. The position of shoulder arms was the formal way in which the rifle was carried. It was used in slow and quick time for circumstances such as march pasts, duties of a sentry, and any time that required a degree of attention and formality. Mastery of this position required some practice, especially while moving. Here, we see a picture of the 79th Highlanders on parade. The rear rank is standing at the shoulder. And here, a Royal Marine addressing an officer. The position of advance arms was used for lesser administrative circumstances, used when marching in file, itself a rare occurrence, and also by junior NCOs, the corporals and lance corporals, when acting in command of men. Like the position of shoulder arms, it could be used in slow or quick time. In keeping with its primarily administrative role, the advance was used as part of the dismissal evolution. After turning to the right on the command right turn, on the command dismissed, the ranks stepped apart, adopting the port simultaneously. The men then broke off and moved quietly off parade at the advance. The advance was also used to pay compliments to lesser officers. After adopting the position, the man placed his left hand flat across the sling of the weapon with the left forearm at waist level. The position of slope arms was typical when moving any great distance. En route to a given destination in the field or in garrison, it was used on all occasions when the formality of the shoulder was not required. It was typically used in quick and double time, and served as a well-balanced and comfortable way to carry a rifle. Change! Arch! When on the march, relief could be gained by switching shoulders on the word of command, change arms. Trail arms was a commonly used movement, both in the field and garrison. Here, we see some examples of the use of the trail a Canadian militiaman of the 1870s. Here, the 24th Regiment of Zulu war fame is depicted engaged in a skirmishing exercise circa 1870. And here, artwork depicting the Battle of Cut Knife during the Northwest Rebellion in Canada. Canadian troops from both rifle and line units are moving at speed in action at the trail. This position was used in both quick and double time. Present arms was the way a soldier paid compliments to higher status officers and other individuals, as well as to colors, flags, and formed bodies of troops. One of the key ceremonial movements of the exercise, its use was pervasive and would have been used daily in all kinds of duties, both ceremonial and routine. If the lone soldier marching in quick time can be shown here to represent a squad or larger group, the present would have been used to pay compliments as shown here. The position of support arms was used primarily by individuals as a more relaxed and sustainable alternative to the shoulder. It would have been used by sentries and other men performing duties that required them to be in locations for extended periods. Secure arms was also used by sentries as an alternative to the shoulder, primarily in inclement weather. The rifle was positioned with a lock under the armpit to afford it some protection. 
the position of port arms was used in certain primarily static circumstances. It was used as the position from which the men had their weapons inspected. On the word of command, for inspection, port arms. The rifle was brought to the port. The lock was brought to the half cock, and the action opened with the thumb and forefinger. This position was also used in the dismissal evolution. On the word of command, right turn, the men faced right. On the word dismiss, the ranks took one pace apart from each other, simultaneously adopting the port, after which they broke off and moved quietly off parade. The position of charged bayonets was used to present the bayonet to the front for the possibility of close quarters engagement. It was used during the delivery of the charge, or assault, onto the enemy position. In this context, it was closely associated with the bayonet exercise, the subject of another video. The evolution of the charge saw the unit advance towards the enemy at the slope. Presumably, after a bombardment, a firefight at long or close range, or under the cover of another unit out in front extended to skirmish. At the appropriate moment and distance from the enemy, the command prepare to charge was given. Prepare to charge! And the front rank only trailed arms. In what could only have been a very short period later, the command charge was given. Charge! The front rank came to the charge. The rear rank continued at the slope and the unit broke into double time. The position of charge bayonets was also used in the evolution of a sentry, challenging an unknown party approaching his position. Obviously, if the sentry could identify the approaching party and deemed there to be no threat, this evolution would not have been used. On the approach of the party, the sentry came to the charge and commanded them to halt. A challenge was issued. Who comes there? Friend. Pass, friend. All's well. After which, satisfied of the friendly intentions of the approaching party, he allowed them to pass and return to the position of standing ease. If the minutiae of the manual exercise isn't quite to your interest, I invite you to fast forward to the 30 minute and 35 second mark where the review exercise will be demonstrated. This will give an overview of some of the commonly used positions in quick time. For instruction, the movements could be broken into a number of parts, depending on their complexity. They were taught individually and were executed on a numbered command. This was known as the manual exercise by numbers. First, we'll deal with movements that were executed from the position of attention, or order arms. Stand at ease from attention. Stand at ease. On the word of command, stand at ease. The man raised his arms, with the left hand being equal to the waist belt and the right hand placed palm down at approximately the center of the chest. Immediately subsequent and with no pause, the hands were clapped at approximately waist level and lowered so that they were crossed right hand over the left at the front of the body. The weapon was cradled in the crook of the right arm. Simultaneous to this, the right foot was drawn back so that its instep was in line with the left heel. The weight was shifted to the rear. Attention from stand at ease. Attention! On the word of command, attention, the arms were returned to the position of attention with the right hand flat against the outside of the rifle and the left hand flat against the thigh. The feet were drawn back up to the position of attention. Fix bayonets from the order. Fix bayonets. On the word of command fix, first the right hand was moved to a position with the thumb behind the rifle. Simultaneous to this, the left arm was raised, keeping the elbow as close to the body as possible, and the thumb hooked behind the socket of the bayonet. On the word of command, bayonets, the right hand moved the rifle slightly forward. Simultaneous to this, the left hand withdrew the bayonet from the scabbard, flipping it over so that the point faced up. The socket was then placed on the muzzle of the rifle with the groove in line with the foresight. Once the socket had been fully seated, the locking ring was rotated, fixing the bayonet to the muzzle. Immediately subsequent to this, the rifle and hands were brought back to the position of attention. 
unfix bandits from the order. Unfix bandits. On the word of command, bayonets, the left hand came across and gripped the rifle just below the muzzle, in the approximate position of the upper band. Immediately subsequent to this, the right hand moved from its position on the stock and, with the knuckle of the first finger, moved the locking ring to the unlock position. Then, with the web of the hand between the thumb and the finger, the bayonet was lifted and rotated off the end of the muzzle. The left hand was then moved to a position at the mouth of the scabbard, and the right hand moved the bayonet point down and inserted it into the scabbard. The hands were then returned to the position of attention. Shoulder arms from the order. Shoulder arms. Two. On the word of command, shoulder, the right hand was repositioned so that the thumb was behind the barrel. With a flick of the wrist, the rifle was brought up and gripped at the lower band. The right elbow was bent at a 90 degree angle and the rifle was held reasonably close to the body. On the word of command 2, the rifle was rotated across the front of the body so that the barrel pointed to the front. The left hand gripped the bottom of the butt plate with the thumb in front of the heel. Immediately subsequent to this, the right hand was withdrawn and moved to a position of attention at the right side. Order arms from the shoulder. Order arms. Two. Three. On the word of command, arms, the right hand came across and gripped the weapon above the lower band. On the word of command, two, the right hand lowered the rifle back to the position of order arms, placing the butt quietly on the ground. Simultaneously, the left hand quit the butt plate and was cut away to the position of attention. On the word of command, three, the right hand was placed flat against the stock of the rifle. Advance arms from the order. Advance! Arms. Two. On the word of command advance, the right hand was repositioned with the thumb behind the barrel. On the word of command arms, with a flick of the right wrist, the rifle was raised and caught simultaneously with both hands, with the right hand at the trigger guard and the left hand on the stock between the lower and middle bands. The right hand gripped the rifle in a peculiar way. The thumb and the forefinger were stretched around the trigger guard with the remaining fingers placed behind the cock of the lock. On the word of command three, the left hand was cut away to the position of attention. Order arms from the advance. Order arms. Two. Three. On the word of command arms, the left hand came across and gripped the weapon with the little finger in line with the point of the right shoulder. On the word of command two, the left hand lowered the rifle and gently placed the butt on the ground, sliding through the right hand. On the word of command three, the left hand quit the rifle and adopted the position of attention. Slope arms from the order. Slope arms. Two. On the word of command slope, the right hand repositioned with the thumb behind the barrel. On the word of command arms, the movement of shoulder arms was executed in the normal fashion. On the word of command two, the left hand was raised, creating a 90 degree angle in the left elbow and the rifle drawn back on the shoulder at an angle of 45 degrees. Note that the rifle is held in an upright fashion and not placed flat on the shoulder. Order arms from the slope. Order arms. Two. Three. On the word of command, arms, the left hand was drawn down, bringing the rifle back to the position of shoulder arms. Simultaneous to this, the right hand came across and gripped the weapon between the lower and middle band. On the word of command, two, the right hand lowered the rifle and placed it gently on the ground in the position of order arms. And on the word of command, three, the right hand reassumed the position of attention with the thumb in front of the barrel. Trail arms from the order. Trail! Arms! On the word of command trail, the right hand regripped the rifle with the thumb behind the barrel. On the word of command arms, with a flick of the right wrist, the rifle was brought up parallel to the ground, gripped at the point of balance. Order arms from the trail. 
Order! Arms! On the word of command, arms, the right hand regripped the rifle, allowing the butt to drop, and was placed in the position of order arms. Immediately subsequent, the right hand reassumed the position of attention. We'll now discuss movements executed from the position of shoulder arms. Present arms from the shoulder. Present arms. Two, three. On the word of command, arms, the left hand rotated the rifle so that the lock faced the front. Simultaneous to this, the right hand came across and gripped the weapon at the wrist. On the word of command 2, the right hand assumed control of the weapon, bringing it up to the center of the body, with the lock maintaining its orientation to the front. Simultaneous to this, the left hand quit the butt plate and was placed sharply, with flat fingers, against the sling immediately above the trigger guard. The elbows were held in and the tips of the fingers were in line with the mouth. On the word of command 3, the rifle was lowered in front of the body, rotating so that the sling faced the front. The right hand regripped the weapon with straight fingers at the wrist, while the left hand gripped the weapon fingers around the forestock and thumb uppermost. The left forearm maintained its 90 degree angle and was held at waist level. Simultaneous to this, the right foot was drawn back so that its instep was in line with the left heel, in a similar fashion to the position of standard ease. Shoulder arms from the present. Shoulder arms. Two. On the word of command arms, the right hand assumed control of the weapon, bringing it back to the position of shoulder arms, rotating it so that the barrel faced the front, and simultaneous to this, the left hand gripped the butt plate. Also, at the same time, the feet were brought back to the position of attention. On the word of command two, the right hand was cut away to the position of attention. Port arms from the shoulder. Port arms! Two! On the word of command arms, the right hand came across and gripped the wrist of the rifle. On the word of command two, the right hand brought the weapon out in front of the body, held at a 45 degree angle with the lock to the front. The left hand quit the butt plate and regripped the weapon just in front of the lock with an all-around grip. The elbows were held close to the body. Shoulder arms from the port. Shoulder arms. Two. On the word of command arms, the right hand moved the rifle back to the position of shoulder arms. The left hand quit the forestock and regripped the weapon at the butt plate. On the word of command two, the right hand was cut away to the position of attention. Advance arms from the shoulder. Advance arms. Two, three. On the word of command arms, the left hand rotated the rifle in a similar fashion to the first part of the present, and the right hand gripped the wrist. On the word of command two, the right hand moved the rifle to a position at the right side rotating it so that the sling faced the front and that the barrel was nestled in the armpit. As it reached this position, the left hand moved from the butt plate and steadied the rifle at the lower band. Simultaneous to this, the right hand regripped the rifle in the position of advance arms. On the word of command three, the left hand was cut away to the position of attention. Shoulder arms from the advance. Shoulder arms. Two. Three. On the word of command arms, the right hand raised the rifle up approximately one inch. Simultaneous to this, the left hand came across and gripped the weapon at the lower band. As the left hand gripped the weapon, the right hand transitioned to a different grip at the wrist with the fingers together and the thumb behind. On the word of command two, the right hand brought the rifle back to the position of shoulder arms, rotating it so that the barrel faced the front. The left hand gripped the butt of the rifle. On the word of command three, the right hand was cut away to the position of attention. Slope arms from the shoulder. Slope arms. On the word of command arms, the left hand was raised, making a bend of 90 degrees in the left elbow. 
The rifle was drawn back on the shoulder at an angle of 45 degrees. Note that the rifle remained upright and not placed flat on the shoulder. Shoulder arms from the slope. Shoulder! Arms! On the word of command, arms, the left hand was lowered, left arm straightened, and the rifle brought back to the position of shoulder arms. Support arms from the shoulder. Support! Arms! Two! Three! On the word of command, arms, the left hand raised the rifle up approximately one inch, and the right hand came across and gripped the weapon at the wrist. On the word of command, two, the left hand quit the butt plate, and the arm was drawn across the front of the body, with the rifle and lock held at the crook of the left elbow. On the word of command three, the right hand was cut away to the position of attention. Shoulder arms from the support. Shoulder! Arms! Two! Three! On the word of command arms, the right hand came across and gripped the weapon at the wrist. On the word of command two, the left arm was straightened and the left hand regripped the rifle at the butt plate. On the word of command three, the right hand was cut away to the position of attention and the left arm was straightened, lowering the rifle to the position of shoulder arms. Secure arms from the shoulder. There are no specifics on how to execute this movement in the manual. Merely a description of the end state or the position that the rifle should end up in. I've chosen, however, to use the movement as used with the end field to demonstrate how this position was adopted. Secure! Arms. Two! Three! On the word of command, arms, the left hand rotated the rifle so that the lock faced the front, and the right hand came across and gripped the wrist. On the word of command, two, the right hand continued to rotate the rifle so that the sling faced the front. The left hand quit the butt plate and re-gripped the weapon at the lower band. On the word of command three, the right hand quit the rifle and reassumed the position of attention. Simultaneous to this, the rifle was lowered in an arc across the front of the body with the muzzle pointed down. Shoulder arms from the secure. Shoulder! Arms! Two! Three! On the word of command arms, the left hand raised the weapon up so that it was perpendicular with the sling facing the front at the left side. Simultaneous to this, the right hand came across and gripped the wrist. On the word of command two, the rifle was rotated in the right hand so that the lock faced the front and the left hand quit the forestock and re-gripped the butt plate. On the word of command three, the right hand was cut away to the position of attention and the left hand rotated the rifle so that the barrel faced the front in the position of shoulder arms. Movements executed from the position of advance arms. Trail arms from the advance. Trail! Arms! Two! On the word of command arms, the left hand came across and gripped the weapon in line with the right elbow. On the word of command two, the right hand quit its position at the trigger guard and gripped the weapon at the point of balance. Simultaneous to this, the left hand quit the forestock reassuming the position of attention, and the rifle was lowered to the position of trail arms parallel to the ground, and held at the point of balance. Advance arms from the trail. Advance arms! Two! On the word of command arms, the right hand rotated the rifle back up where it was gripped with the left hand as it came across the body. Simultaneous to this, the right hand quit its position on the forestock and regripped the rifle in the position of advance arms. On the word of command two, the left hand was cut away to the position of attention. Movements executed from the position of port arms. Charge bayonets from the port. Charge bayonets! On the word of command bayonets, the rifle was brought down to a position nearly parallel to the ground with the bayonet pointed slightly up. The arms were straightened with the right wrist held at the hollow of the right thigh and the left arm straightened across the front of the body. Simultaneous to this, the body was rotated to the right so that the left foot faced the front and that the right foot faced to the right. Shoulder arms from charge bayonets. Shoulder! Two. 
On the word of command, arms, the right hand assumed control of the rifle, moving it to the position of shoulder arms at the left side. Simultaneously, the left hand quit the forestock and regripped the weapon at the butt plate. The body was pivoted on the heel's back, oriented straight to the front. On the word of command, two, the right hand was cut away to the position of attention. To conduct the manual exercise in quick time, the movements were combined, observing a pause of slow time between them. With a view to demonstrating competence in the manual exercise, an evolution known as the review exercise was conducted at parades, reviews, and inspections. During this, all movements of the manual exercise were not necessarily performed but rather a selection of the more commonly used movements and positions. Attention! Shoulder! Arms! Review exercise! Present! Arms! Shoulder! Port! Arms! Charge! Bennett! Shoulder! Arms! Advance! Arms! Order! Arms! Advance, arch, shoulder, arch, support, arch, shoulder, arch, slow. Shoulder, arch, order, arch, unfix, bend, I'd like to make mention of some of the kit worn for this video. As mentioned earlier, the Snyder very much represented a transitional period. The kit and uniforms that were worn with the P-53 continuing on generally into the early 1870s. There was one notable exception, the cap pouch. One of the primary ways to identify whether or not a man is carrying a Snyder or Enfield in the late 1860s, if the lock of the rifle cannot be viewed clearly, is the presence of the cap pouch. This was worn attached to the pouch belt and positioned in the center of the chest. Being a breech loader, the Snyder did not require caps, making the absence of such a pouch a good indication of the man being armed with a Snyder. Another item new to the channel, and made especially for this video, is the 1856 pattern knapsack. This was the last pattern knapsack, and was used until the issue of the P-71 release equipment in the early 1870s became more pervasive. In Canada, it was used astonishingly until the 1890s. Distinguishing features include the greatcoat, folded and strapped to the back instead of being rolled on top, and the mess tin fixed in its place. The interesting arrangement of straps is also of note. A stick was fixed to the upper edge against the back, and this better supported the knapsack higher on the back. As some of the viewers may be aware, the uniform that I am wearing is a likeness of that of the 78th Highlanders of 1867. They had just taken up a posting to Montreal in Canada and had, very quickly after their arrival, been armed with the Snyder. Later, they would be posted to Halifax, where today a group hired by Parks Canada, known as the Halifax Citadel Society, recreates the 78th from the 1869 and 1870 time frame. Last, but certainly not least, I'd like to thank a friend of the channel, Branco, for his help as a member of the Victoria Esquimalt Military Reenactors Association in liaising with Parks Canada to allow me to once again visit Fort Rod Hill in Esquimalt, BC in order to film some parts of this presentation. Your help is always appreciated. Many thanks to you and to Vemra. If you'd like to support the channel, 
please stop by our Patreon page. The link is in the description below.